South Africa's Transnet has suspended freight rail services on its northeast corridor, which connects with several countries in southern Africa due to heavy rains that have damaged infrastructure on the line. Transnet is responsible for ensuring that the South African transport industries operate according to world-class standards and that they form an integral part of the overall economy. Now, due to its crucial role in moving cargo to domestic markets and ports for worldwide exports, Transnet plays a significant economic role for South Africa. However, it is now dealing with significant difficulties as a result of years of decline brought on by government takeover, poor management, neglect, and changes in the economic structure. The Northeast Corridor, which primarily transports mineral products, connects South Africa to Swaziland, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Zambia, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Mineral Council says that if Transnet had been running at optimal capacity, South Africa could have gained 151 billion rand in additional exports, with the mining sector increasing employment between 40,000 to 500,000 jobs through further economic activity. Joining me now is Bogun Kosi Maboso. He's the Transnet Freight Rail Commercial Chief Officer. As we get into the floods, the funding, and of course, the future of Transnet. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me, Bonin Kosi. Um, let's start looking at this. This is the second year, unfortunately, in a row that Transnet has been affected by uh, flooding. But these current floods are a little bit different than what happened last year. So let's start from here. How much damage has the flooding caused Transnet's infrastructure? Uh, thank you for having me on our show, Tully, and a uh, good uh, afternoon to your viewers. Um, what has happened and, and what has impacted us with these floods is we've lost uh, quite significant opportunities of revenue earning on our end uh, to the tune of about 400,000 tons that we could have moved uh, due to the floods that we have not been able to move. Just to bring a bit of context, um, the areas that have been impacted by the floods experience rains for a period of three weeks consecutively. And uh, as a result, we, we experienced washaways of some of our rail infrastructure. And most importantly, uh, we also had stoppages on our rail operations. So as I said, this is the second year that uh, Transnet has experienced flooding. One would even have to ask, has Transnet even recovered from last year's flooding before being hit uh, by this second year in a row? We have not fully recovered. The corridor that was impacted by the floods in the in the uh, in last year uh, was the container corridor which runs between Johannesburg and, and Devon and uh, there are branch lines that would link up within KwaZulu Natal province uh, uh, where it, the end destination of the line is uh, that would still have not been recovered up to date. we recently were funded uh, to the tune of about uh, 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 3 billion rands um, for infrastructure uh, uh, maintenance uh, that we've, we've implemented on the line, uh, which has enabled us to bring on uh, back into operation our main line between Johannesburg and, and Devon. But the branch lines that would link then the, the surroundings of Devon with the port still remain unoperational at this stage. So we still have not fully recovered mm. uh, from the impact of the previous floods, and we are now dealing with this issue. And so when you look at it overall, Transnet is quite important to not just South Africa, but also to the Southern Africa region uh, and neighboring countries. So how has this primarily affected business for South Africa uh, and then also for the region as well? Uh, thank you. That's a very important point that you raise. Um, South Africa is an integral part of the SADC region, and therefore we partner very closely uh, with countries such as Swaziland, uh, Mozambique, amongst others. Uh, the unfortunate part with this uh, 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 flooding that we experienced is that it wasn't just limited to South Africa. Uh, some of the rail infrastructure leading into Swaziland and Mozambique was equally impacted. We have been able to restore operations on our side in South Africa, but uh, our partners uh, across the, the border in, in Swaziland uh, still remain unoperational at this stage, which means the impact of the loss in revenue extends across to South Africa and, and Swaziland. Uh, Mozambique, on the other hand, has been able to uh, uh, re-enable uh, operations and the trains are moving uh, in that regard. So you gave us uh, a figure for the amount of money that you've recently been funded, but I think a lot of people would also want to know, in terms of the damage, do we have an estimate to that? 
uh, how much has this really cost um, Transnet, which also would become sort of an intangible cost overall to South Africa's economy. And as you mentioned, like Swaziland still being unoperational as well, but Mozambique picking up and recovering. So what's the estimate, do we know, in terms of the damage that's been caused by the severe flooding? A lot of work is still being done to, to access uh, the, the underlying uh, damage. What we've done is we've resuscitated the line and brought it back into operation, uh, but a lot of analysis is still being done in saying, other than just the washaways, uh, what other parts of our network were impacted and the infrastructure that needs to be replaced? So at this stage, it's still early stages to give an, a definitive mm -hmm. figure. Uh, safe to say, in order to bring the line back into operation, we've spent, particularly on the Northeast Corridor, some 39 million rands uh, in, in just getting the line back into operation. Perhaps another point that one needs to make, and uh, this now extends to the damage that goes beyond our, our infrastructure, is the fact that uh, over and above the actual uh, line itself, we are having now a challenge of uh, the nearby formation in terms of boulders, uh, falling onto our infrastructure, which means then that the investment extends beyond just the rail infrastructure as you would know it, uh, into maintaining and ensuring stability in the formation and soil formation around the network itself. So at this stage, we've spent 39 million rands. Uh, we do anticipate that there will be more uh, as we continue to assess the damage. So talking about that assessment, you're definitely going to have to have a full safety assessment before uh, the complete reopening of the Northeast Corridor. Is there a timeline to this? When you mentioned boulders, that's going to involve heavy earth moving equipment having to be brought in uh, to move off the, uh, the railways and having to make sure that the rail lines are still in, in themselves uh, in right and working order. So do we have a timeline for this assessment? Because that timeline will also definitely give us an idea of how much continues to be lost as long as Transnet is not back to being fully operational in the Northeast Corridor. Thank you. So we, we, what we've done is with the interim solution that we've put in place, we've managed to enable all rail operations on our part. And for that reason, we are not continuing to lose uh, foreign earning uh, opportunities and revenue because the line is fully operational. The only limiting factor at this stage is that some of our traffic traverses through Swaziland. If you look at the flow that carries, for example, uh, magnetite uh, to Richards Bay, uh, that flow would run into Swaziland and on the other side of Swaziland. With Swaziland being unoperational at this stage, that's where the challenge is in terms of continuing to lose uh, revenue. However, in relation to the question that you are asking pertaining to uh, uh, the assessment, the team is fully engaged and that they are concluding uh, their studies. We anticipate that within the next week, uh, the bulk of the work in understanding the, the, the overall damage will be concluded and we should then be in a position to provide a much clearer, a much clearer view in relation to that. So the flooding is an act of nature, but Transnet has also been the victim of the acts of man. There's been uh, issues with stealing of infrastructure and steel and things like that. We've talked about, of course, um, the management issue that Transnet has faced. You talked about the a loan or bailout or funding, whatever terminology you want to use. But over the past several years, people have been worried about Transnet. Is there a reason for investors and people who are interested in the mining sector in South Africa to continue to be worried about Transnet and its operations? Uh, Tolu, rather than uh, saying the private sector should be worried about Transnet, uh, I would look at it differently and say we are looking at private sector coming into the party to partner with us in resolving some of these challenges. Some of the issues that you mentioned are actually beyond uh, uh, the normal course of business for a rail operator. When you look at, for example, cable theft as a, as a challenge, we've spent quite a sizable amount uh, uh, of resources in trying to manage and cap the instances of uh, cable theft and vandalism through our network. Uh, but it's gotten to the point where it requires, uh, of course, all parties uh, to rally together and to partner in ensuring that we eliminate this. We are also looking at other alternative uh, methods of curbing and managing this. Uh, one of, of such being changing our contracting methodology with our service providers in relation to cable theft. We are bringing in a different contract where we will be paying service providers on the basis of the outcome of the services that, that they provide. 
And for that reason, we do anticipate we'll make a big dent in relation to that. But the long of and long and short of it is that we require partnership with the various industries in order to ensure that we eliminate these challenges that face Transnet. And private and, and partnership in the private sector is where I want us to wrap up this conversation very quickly. So privatization has been suggested as a way for Transnet to get to optimal service delivery uh, when the CEO was delivering a presentation to South Africa's parliament. But we've heard very clearly from the unions such as South Africa's uh, South African Transport and Allied Workers Union um, that they're absolutely rejecting it. It's also been rejected, of course, by the South African Transport that's the full name, the South African Transport and Allied Workers Union. Is there a compromise to be found? What does Transnet really need for it to be able to do what it needs to do, not just for South Africa, but also for the Southern African region? What's the future of Transnet? So in, in summary, I'll try and maybe club uh, in uh, all the issues that you've raised in, in one response. First of all, let's qualify that we are not looking at privatization as an organization at all. I think... Uh, there have been instances of uh, Transnet being misquoted in, in, the num in a number of platforms in relation to this. What we've said is uh, government in South Africa is currently in the process of promulgating a white paper uh, that will enable third party uh, participation in rail infrastructure. And for that reason, what we've done is we went out uh, with um, a, a, an, an, an initiative to sell slots on our network where private operators can run trains in our network. That's not privatization. This is something that all rail uh, networks across the world uh, do, where you find private operators running trains within a network that is owned by a state-owned entity. That's number one. Number two, uh, the three issues that uh, you alluded to, um, uh, some of which being cable theft, uh, the infrastructure itself, and of course the issue of locomotives that we did not touch on in this conversation, are all linked to a requirement for investment, particularly uh, in, uh, in enabling uh, network uh, usability. We have suffered from quite a significant underinvestment in, uh, in rail infrastructure, and for that reason, we require that funding in order to enable a, a lower cost of running uh, logistics services in our network. And that's where uh, we are then saying we are looking at different funding models with the private sector to come in and, and support in funding the network in order to then move a lot of the volumes that we are seeing on road uh, onto rail. None of these initiatives are to do with literally privatizing uh, the organization at all, but rather to say, how do we partner to support the economy better between ourselves and the, and the private sector? And I think that clarity and that clarification is a very good one to make because Transnet is, is going to be a topic of conversation for a large part of this year. Uh, so we look forward to talking to you again. Abongin Kosi, thank you so much for joining me on this conversation. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. Uh